Pugh. Pugh! That'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football Well, it's finally happened. AFC Bournemouth have announced that Scott Parker is the new manager of the Cherries. The last permanent manager we had, as far as we knew, was Jason Tindall. And then it was 15 games or so for Jonathan Woodgate to try to impress. Ultimately, we fell short. But Scott Parker is a man that the club have had designs on for a long time. And after Fulham released a statement to say that he's leaving the club... AFC Bournemouth swooped and managed to get everything sorted in that short space of time. Or maybe it didn't quite work out like that. But either way, with me to discuss things, we've got Tom Jordan. Tom, how are you? All good, boss. All good. And also we've got Mr Tiggs here as well. Tiggsy, how you doing? Really good, buddy. Really good. So firstly, I think it's probably a good place to start by looking at what Fulham put on their website. Really interesting press release saying that Fulham can confirm that Scott Parker has left the club by mutual consent. Talking about what he did, he took over in caretaker charge and then went on to talk about uh, their defeat of Brentford in the championship playoff final, but then the relegation of the subsequent campaign. Here's where we need to look closely. Matt Wells, the first team coach. Rob Birch, the goalkeeping coach. Alastair Harris, the head of sports science. Jonathan Hill, the first team match analyst. And Charlie Moore, the lead physical performance coach, have also left the club. Hello, boys. Fulham chairman Shahid Khan said... Through promotion and relegation alike, Scott has always enjoyed my support as our head coach. This is where the catty uh, remarks start to begin. Scott's departure does nothing to shake my confidence, however. We'll hire a new head coach who is capable of achieving our goal of promotion and will be committed to Fulham and its supporters. And we will field a squad that will respond, compete and win. Onward. Very, very interesting. And then shortly after that came out, Chris Temple then broke the news to say that Stephen Purchase, Simon Weatherston and Neil Moss, who, of course, have got roles in those aforementioned roles of their equivalents at Craven Cottage, have all left the club along with long serving physio Steve Hard and Steve Hard infamous last season. For Jordan Clark's comment on commentary when they were going to bring Steve Hard on. But look, Scott Parker is here, boys. We all knew it was on the cards. Tiggs, initial reaction, mate? Initial reaction. I suppose uh, it's it's really a case of just feeling a little bit relieved that we've got to a point where um, it's finally been said that we're moving forward with it because it's been rumbling on for such a long time. Sadness for those uh, people who are leaving, but also a little bit excited because I think this is the first time we have a club have ever made that statement. This is the start of something completely different to what we've been used to. Yeah, it completely is. And look, Tom, people have seen our video where we talk about the top 15 reasons or 15 reasons why he would be a good fit for AFC Bournemouth. Of course, there are people that are still not convinced, but when you look at it, he does have the experience of getting a championship side promoted to the Premier League. Yes, in the Premier League, Fulham fans became a little bit resistant of his style, but we're not in the Premier League. We're in the championship and we need a manager to get us into the Premier League. So he could be a good fit for us. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, I, I like the fact that he's a you know young English manager, seems to come across quite well. Um, like you say, he's, he's been there and done that in the championship. So he's got that experience. I think it's easy to listen to kind of other supporters sometimes managers and players as well just fit certain clubs don't they um i mean jonathan woodgate didn't do very well at borough under different circumstances he's he's left very um you know head held high here we're all happy with the work he did and eddie howe didn't really burnley fans didn't even think much of eddie howe so mm. we don't need to say what he'd done here and it's been similar with players over the years and it? it's Simon francis is one that comes off me straight away so not gonna read too much into that but um same with what Tig said, just relief, really, because you just, the more, it feels like we've had Scott Parker as manager for ages. It feels like, well, he's always, because we haven't really been linked with anyone else, but you're always that thing in the back of your head, like, imagine if this fell through and something happened, mm. do you know what I mean? So, 
just great that he's got him in now and hopefully he'll just be really excited now to see who he brings in and who he keeps and you know which who he kind of what players he wants to build the team around so it's exciting now we just got to back him you know like we did with with Jason at the start and then Woody and just hopefully this time it will um end in a bit more successful season but yeah, I'm looking forward to it now. Um, but as Tig said as well, shame to see some of them, some of the old guard go in terms of the staff. But it had to happen at some point. But um, yeah, always hard to lose such great standing staff members. But we have still got plenty around. So yeah, looking forward to the season. I'm sure everyone watching is going to be wanting to join in, and you can do so. We're doing a special free for all after England thump Germany or. It goes to extra time and pens, but we're going to be on at 7.30. So if you want to join us after the football, after England v Germany, then certainly you can do so. It's going to be a free, a free for all where you can have your say. And look, we're going to try to keep it positive. And Tiggs, as I said on a video the other day, certain managers fit certain teams. And whilst the Cottagers fans at the moment are maybe not so happy with his style and there was a quote on a forum that i've mentioned before 85 percent of fulham fans would be happy to drive him to the vitality stadium yeah certain clubs fit certain people like i said eddie didn't fit in well at burnley david moyes didn't do well at man united there are a plethora of managers that don't fit a club but maybe he could be the ideal fit for us well i mean we've complained before about the club not taking action quick enough They've had this guy at top of their list. Well, we're pretty sure pretty much lined up to replace Eddie if Eddie ever left. That's what it feels yeah. like to me. So we can't say that we haven't done our due diligence. We can't say that we haven't had the odd conversation. We know that he is related to an ex-player who undoubtedly probably would have had an influence upon his decision. He knows what he's coming to. Mm. And if he's chosen to come to our football club, then we've done a very good job of setting it. And we must feel that he is the right fit. So if you're going to roll the dice, at least do your research. We've done that. We're trying something new. For me, I guess, we can court on him so long. If it wasn't him, I'd probably be, be a bit disappointed by now. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And so... Obviously, the other day we had the announcement, not from Fulham, but from Sky Sports, that Scott Parker was due to leave the club. And that was a respectful time window, I think, for AFC Bournemouth to swoop in. We all know that things have been happening behind the scenes, negotiations, the people that have come with him. For the full story, of course, check out AFC Bournemouth on Twitter and go to the afcb.co.uk uh, UK website because, yeah... It's big changes for us. And Tom, is there a danger of us returning to a club, an identity of which we just we don't really know anymore? It's difficult. What I'll, what I'll give the board credit for, they've, they've had a lot of, lot of stick really over the last season with the you know, managerial decisions and you know, decisions at the top in general. They want, they want this man, they want Scott Parker, and they've gone and got him. And you know, you've got to give them credit for that. You know, they haven't, if we had not got Scott Parker, after it was clear that he's the only one they want, it would have been worrying. I think regardless of whether you personally want him or not, I think, you know, they've laid down a marker that he was their man. So I like to think they're looking at Scott Parker as the project now and they're going to give him time and they obviously believe in him long term. And that's a positive step. We, you could have got a manager in. You thought, oh, maybe he'll get us up. But then there's no real long term. I like the long term thought in Scott Parker. So um, I think that's exciting. I don't, I don't think we're in danger of being a club that's going to twist and change all the time. I hope not anyway, but but we'll see. And I think it's it's easy, like we said, with Fulham fans saying that, you know, they would have drove him here and all that stuff. Apart from us, you've got to remember, we're a very unique in terms of the Eddie Howe factor. I think apart from us, how many teams get relegated from the Premier League and love their manager and want to keep him? It's very That's rare. Fantastic. And normally, if you get relegated, you want a new manager. That's just normally the way it goes. So I'm not going to read too much into that. He's going to have a, a completely different squad. Um, and yeah, like I say, I'm just, I'm just really intrigued to see kind of his methods and what he does with the club and what his be interested to see with like signings and things like that, how long term he's thinking or is he thinking, you know, and we'll be interested to see with certain statements and stuff when we hear more from, from Scott, if he's really just thinking about, right, let's get back to the Premier League and go from there. Or if he's thinking, you know, if we don't go up at the first tent, I'm building something and we'll be there or thereabouts the year after, you know, it'd be interesting to see what kind of stuff said from, from now until the season starts really. So, um, look, it's time to back him now, isn't it? And uh, be positive and let's, Let's hope for the best. The board have got the man they wanted and they deserve credit for that. Yeah, and 
Tiggs, how many times have you seen people on Twitter, Facebook, etc., critical that you know Eddie Howe Howe has just signed his friends? Stephen Purchase was one of them. Um, I'm going to be sincerely sad to see him go, but fans are going to no longer have that excuse now, are they? And uh, look, if Scott Parker can can induce this sort of counter-attacking brand of football. Um, Steve Purchase left us with a memory back in 2003 that was probably one of the best counter-attacking mm. goals we've ever seen, eh? Yeah. Oh, wow. What a goal. I can still I close my eyes and think about it every night. Uh, <laughs> it is one of my favourites. It is. Yeah, I mean, look, you've got to surround yourself with people you trust. Uh, and that was something that Eddie really, really believed in. And clearly, Scott Parker believes in the same. I know Jeff made a comment, tongue in cheek, about being Eddie Light, but there are a lot of similarities, I think, between the two in, the, in terms of their personality and hopefully their work ethic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is sad to see those those people leave. Um, I know Steve Hard's been there for I don't know donkey's years now, hasn't he? Uh, yeah. Probably over fifteen years, and I know he was really well appreciated and loved at the club as Mossy as well. Um, so. I mean, very best for them. I hope. I had a funny feeling that maybe when uh, when Eddie was looking to possibly move up north, that they might have been some of them on his wish list to take him with him. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll work coming up for them. Yeah, absolutely hope so. And look, we've got to give some honourable mentions to the others as well. You know, Simon Weatherston did um, a ridiculously good you know, job and you can see what he did with in training with the behind the scenes videos as well uh neil moss as well tom it's um it's sad to see these faces go but you can see why scott parker would want his own team because he needs the names around him that he knows and he works well with yeah definitely i think it's it's very similar to when we've lost a lot of the the old guard from the playing staff you know simon francis andrew sermon charlie daniels we've all had that recently mark pew etc mm. um and it is hard because i'm i'm very sentimental and i'll just keep them all there forever but um yeah, listen, it'll be it'll be mad if Scott Parker joined a club and just went in on his own and thought, I don't want any of the people that I can trust and that, you know, I've benefited from and they've benefited from me in a working relationship as a manager before. So they're obviously, it's clearly nothing against the the guys that have gone. It's just that Scott's got people in place that, that he wants to take them roles. And yeah, you've got, you've got to respect that. If when Eddie, you know, as soon as Eddie went to, to Burnley, first thing he did was took Jason with him. You know, this this happens a lot. It's it's just a bit alien for us, isn't it? More than most clubs. Um, so I think we just got to get used to it a little bit. But mm. yeah, listen, they're all, you know, Mossy and, and Purchase as well. You know, remember them as players. You know, it's both mm. both played in that game, like you mentioned earlier against Lincoln. So yeah, great memories for them and I hope they do do well. And they both seem like they've, you know, let's say about Eddie's friends or whatever, them, them all them staff, they wouldn't have been at a club that have had five years in the Premier League if they weren't good at their jobs. Um, Eddie Howe certainly wouldn't have had him if he didn't trust him. With him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. And look, Tiggs, we know uh, that Steve Hard had his moment and I don't, I don't think we can not play that because it was quality, wasn't it? Calling <laughs> physio Steve Hard on. <laughs> oh. I know what you meant. Um... <laughs> But he was more than a joke to us, wasn't he? And you know what? I've heard some. I've you know I've heard some really uh, you know nice stories about him. And it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. And has this maybe um, you know just tickled your excited taste buds a bit, Tiggs? Because I must admit, last season, you know, with Woodgate, yes, I know we brought in Gary O'Neill, who who is staying at the club, by the way, uh, Joe Jordan, who's left. So we had a bit of a change, but this now feels like something fresh and something new. And does this now make you a little bit excited about the season ahead? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we tried continuity. That, that was the plan, maybe, uh, with Tyndall, was to carry on what we had, you know, it worked. It was a formula that worked to get promoted, but it didn't work. It it, mm. it just fell a little bit short. We we made a bit of a, a quick change in the middle of the season to bring somebody else in. It didn't quite work as we much as we wanted to. Although uh, Woodgate, I think, did an admirable job. So yeah, it does actually because this is fresh start. It's uh, a long pre-season ahead, hopefully, to get these squad of players together to find some more players, hopefully as well. And to actually get them playing in maybe a different style or, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing who we got in pre-season friendlies and I'm looking forward to see pictures on the training ground. So, yeah, definitely. 
Well, I'll tell you what, it's been it's been a busy old time uh, on the football pitch in, in terms of the Euros. I mean, Spain, Croatia was an absolutely ridiculous game, of course, France, Switzerland. And then, yes, England versus Germany. As soon as that's finished, well, we'll give it a bit of time. Hopefully, it will be all good. Hopefully, we'll win the game. We'll talk about that, I'm sure. But also, you've got a chance as well to get involved on a free-for-all. We're really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And look, we want to be positive. We don't want to be negative at this early stage. I don't want it to turn in, in into that sort of Jason Tyndall show that we had on a Saturday night when he was appointed. Because, yeah, that was... I think that was when that infamous clip came out, Tom, didn't it? Why? Why? Someone tell me why. Is that it? I don't know what we're talking about. Maybe why was that he wasn't actually that good. But, uh, no, listen, I think <laughs> I think that's the thing now, isn't it? You've got uh, whatever your kind of persuasion on it. Um, have I been rooting for, for Scott Parker? Not really. But, like I said, they deserve credit for that's the mat. They're the ones to make decisions, not me. And they clearly want him. And they went and got him. So now it's time to back him. And... He's come to, yeah, clearly things have broke down with Fulham, but he's he wouldn't just take any old job. He's obviously mm. been sold something about the Bournemouth job and that he really believes in. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, I think I'm just more, just want to get it going again now. It feels, mm. like you said, Sam, it feels, um, it felt like the the Woodgate thing was kind of just temporary yeah. and we it wasn't actual change. So we've got that change now. And yes, yeah, bring it on. I think, I think people will be more positive this time around because I think the board have, you know, kind of done what, what they should have done in the first place, you know, and really gone for gone for someone they believe in. So, um, yeah, it should be exciting. Yeah, it should be exciting. Closing thoughts, Tiggs. I mean, let's just, uh, we have done so already, but Woodgate has left and what a dignified fella he was. He, he sort of seemed to bring back a connection between fans and the players and the team, not only by, you know, making sure the players were playing as well as they can, those seven games in a row, were good, but even those simple three words at the end of his interviews, up the cherries, it just it just made us feel all warm and fuzzy, didn't it? Up cherries. Yeah, up. I loved it. Every time he did it, uh, he did. And he, he bought into the culture straight away. And mm. uh, the club released a lovely little video of him on the touchline celebrating a goal as well. Yeah, and, yeah it was really, really good. Um, nice little closing thought. Oh, here's a nice omen for you. Look, I, I think, I might be wrong, and I'll be awful if I am wrong, I think Scott Parker has capped in England, doesn't he, before? And uh, yeah, I think he has. So uh, maybe that's a good omen for for the game later yeah. on as well. Wow, that that certainly is a good omen. And remember, half past seven is the time to get involved after England versus Germany for a free throw. And look, I'm going to go through the positive vibes. That this is why we're happy. Okay, frequent signs of playing a free flowing counter attacking brand of football. That's what Scott Parker does. Lengthy spells of possession. We're used to that. Excellent man management. He's going to be mindful of the harsh realities of the Premier League. He's going to want to do things differently with Bournemouth, right? And actually, you know, get them promoted and keep them there. He gets influence on transfers, which is a good sign. He'll be driven to better the team that he's just left. That's a big, big point. Fulham's uh, in promotion in their promotion season, they had the best passing accuracy of any side in the league and also were tied for the most goals from open play. Parker, hard graft as a player. He's going to instill that work rate into ball with players. Do you think they're going to be messing about? I certainly hope not. In an interview with the FA, Scott Parker insisted that creating a player-friendly environment was one of the most important things that a manager could do. Speaking of managers, he's worked under Roy Hodgson, Jose Mourinho, Sam Allardyce, a smorgasbord of <laughs> managers there. So he's got a lot of experience and know-how there. Plus, his desired system of play is a 4-2-3-1. Therefore, the players that we do have left on our books, they're going to be used to it, right? And also, he does give trust to youth. Some Fulham fans say not enough, but certainly where he is competent is within the loan system. He presses high, plenty of turnovers. The team play as a unit, defensive high line. Therefore, a number of offsides will be given um, against the teams that we're playing. He plays from the back and also he's picked up some great results. Remember Liverpool away last season? Yeah, they weren't off form, but to get a result there was absolutely huge for them. Tom? I'm buzzing about this now. Come on. God, just give us the trophy, why won't you? Give us the trophy. <laughs> easy, easy. No, yeah, let's look forward to it. And like you say, they, <sighs> they've done some done some good dealings and things like that. And I've always thought he's had some good young players. And they've done really well in the Championship as well. And that's the first and foremost, isn't it? If you're just thinking about the here and now. Mm. He's done it. And he's been in the Championship once as a manager. And he got the team out of it. 
Um, so that's definitely positive. And he's a bloody good player. Yeah. He was a real warrior, wasn't he? So, so there's similarities with Woodgate in the terms of what I, I can imagine him being quite good in the dressing room because he, he gave his all on the pitch. So, um, yeah, let's look forward and just give us the trophy, why don't you? Easy. I'll, I'll pass seven after England v Germany. Join us. Uh, Tom, thanks very much, buddy. Cheers, boss. Tiggs, appreciate your company and welcome Scott Parker, eh? Welcome, Scotty. Welcome, Scotty. And we'll see you in the next one where you can get involved. Oscar!